Welcome to the Association for Library Service to Children Awards presentation. I'm Cecilia P. McGowan, President of the Association for Library Service to Children. Thank you for joining us live or otherwise to celebrate the winners of the 2020 Cybert, Batchelder, Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media, and the Geisel Awards. Though these four awards celebrate distinct categories of youth media, they all share the common cause of celebrating some of the year's best media available to children. I also want to thank ALS leadership, the ALS staff, and committees, guided by ALS Priority Group Consultant Carol Phillips. I also want to thank Bob Seibert of Bound to Stay Bound Books for his continued support of the ALSC Awards program. Without further ado, let's begin the awards presentation with the chair of the 2020 Robert F. Seibert Informational Book Medal, Sally Michalek. Hello, I'm Sally Michalek, chair of the 2020 Robert F. Seibert Medal Committee. The Seibert Medal, named in honor of Robert F. Seibert, longtime president of Bound to Stay Bound Books Incorporated, is awarded annually to the author and illustrator of the most distinguished children's informational book published in the United States in English during the preceding year. It has been my privilege and pleasure to work with the members of the 2020 Cyber Award Committee. Their close reading, tireless fact-checking, and open-minded discussion is to be commended. This year, we seek to honor four books that explore the history of inquiry, demonstrate pride in lessons learned, press for justice, and give voice to a young person's artistic development. We are proud to offer this year's medal to a book that, through its focus on a humble but essential foodstuff, offers a bridge across generations and across geography and stands in defiance of centuries of genocide and repression. And now, the 2020 Cyber Honor Books and Award winner. Yay! All in a Drop, How Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek Discovered an Invisible World Written by Lori Alexander, illustrated by Vivian Mildenberger Published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Books for Young Readers Here's Lori Hello from Tucson, Arizona. I'm Lori Alexander, author of All in a Drop, How Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek Discovered an Invisible World I loved telling the story of the unlikely scientist who followed his curiosity and taught us to see the world in a whole new way. Thank you so much for the Cybert honor and to the team at HMH for making this possible. Hey, Water, written and illustrated by Antoinette Portis, published by Neil Porter Books, Holiday House. Here's Antoinette. Ordinary Hazards, a memoir by Nikki Grimes, published by Wordsong, an imprint of Boyd's Mills and Kane. Here's Nikki. Hi, this is Nikki Grimes, author of Ordinary Hazards, and I have to say, ever since winning the Cybert Honor for my memoir, I suddenly find that I'm in love with nonfiction. Just kidding. But seriously, a thousand thanks to the selection committee for choosing to honor ordinary hazards. Thank you. This Promise of Change, One Girl's Story in the Fight for School Equality, written by Joanne Allen Boyce and Debbie Levy, published by Bloomsbury Children's Books. Here's Joanne and Debbie. Hi, I'm Joanne Allen Boyce. I'm Debbie Levy. The greatest reward that our book has brought me is Joanne's friendship. I feel the same way about Debbie's friendship. For me, another great reward has been to see students meet Joanne and recognize her as the civil rights hero that she is. Still, other rewards are always welcome. So thank you for honoring this promise of change with a cyber honor. 
The winner of the 2020 Robert F. Seibert Medal is Fry Red, A Native American Family Story, written by Kevin Noble Millard, illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal, published by Roaring Brook Press, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group. Here to deliver their acceptance speeches are Kevin Noble Millard and Juana Martinez Neal. Hello, I am Juana Martinez Neal, illustrator of Fry Bread, a Native American family story, published by Roaring Brook Press, an honor with the Robert F. Cyber Medal. I fell in immediate bond to Kevin and his words the first time I read Fry Bread. As soon as I was done reading it, I went back to the beginning and read it again, and then again for a third time. But I was reading his words, I came to the profound realization that I needed to illustrate this book. Weeks and then months went by until I was time to dedicate myself fully to work on Fry Bread. And with that came doubt. What does it take to tell someone else's story? How could I illustrate this story if I am not Native American? I will be lying if I say that I did not struggle with these questions throughout every step of the making of this book. Every time doubt overtook me, I reminded myself the reason why I wanted to illustrate this book in the first place. It was because of what Kevin and I had in common and shared. The big family get-togethers, the sharing of the kitchen with our elders, the large mixed-race families filled with joy, and being born and raised in Peru, the understanding of how indigenous people can be treated and mistreated. But most importantly, it was the pride to continue to carry on our traditions and pass them along to our children. It was clear at this point that the best way to illustrate this book was letting Kevin guide me. I made sketches and asked questions, lots of questions. I tormented myself, really. After constant back and forth and with Kevin's help, the right details started to appear. A simple bowl will turn into the bowl Grandma uses to mix the dough. A simple skirt will become a traditional semi skirt worn by the family's auntie. A boy with glasses would become Kevin's boy. Just like in a recipe, there were many, many details discussed, tweaked, added and removed in the process of making fried bread, a Native American family story. Yet there is one more I must include, its end papers, which were created as a way to include in a seminal specific book all nations and tribes that currently are in what is now the United States. An attempt to embrace and include them all in one book was very important. This is the last piece I painted for the book, and it encompasses what I am poorly trying to communicate here with words. In here, I am sitting at the table present without interruptions, bringing a bit of my own culture to the table with my chamomile tea and a very Peruvian pan francés, enjoying my time seeing the family, enjoying their time spent together. So to conclude, my approach to illustrating fry bread was to bring ideas to our team while asking many more questions. It was to consciously let others help me make choices so that I could best honor a culture that is not mine yet one that I deeply respect and admire. My most profound thanks to the Robert F. Cyber Committee for choosing to honor Freiburg and Native American family story. My thanks to ASK and ALA. My infinite gratitude to Kevin for writing this book and Connie Shu for entrusting me with telling this story. To my agent Stephanie for always being there for me. Thank you to Jen Keenan, Aram Kim, Megan Abate, and Elise McMillan Chioti. Without your help, Fiber wouldn't be the book that it is now. And to Roaring Brook Press and Macmillan for the immense support to Fibred since the very beginning. Thank you to all who embraced and shared Fibred. This book wouldn't be in the hands of readers if it wasn't for each one of you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Many gracias. 
I'm Kevin Millard, and with Juana Martinez Neal, we are the creators of Fry Bread, which is this year's Cybert Medal winner. I wrote and illustrated my very first book in Mrs. Holcomb Brink's second grade class at Fulton Elementary School in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was a jumbled narrative about a block party and a dog and a rainbow and maybe a bicycle. The dog died in the end. It was illustrated in smudge crayon. Uh, it had stick leg -like creatures, spoked orbs in the sky, stripes of grass, you know, other stripes of sky. Just picture a South Park aesthetic and you'll get the idea. It was my masterpiece, though. It was my oeuvre maitresse, and I was so proud to enter it into the citywide story competition where it was sure to win. All of the second graders in the city were going to convene in an auditorium downtown where they, where they were going to announce the winners. So when they called my name, I had all these plans where I was going to march up to the stage, puff out my chest, I have brand new sneakers just bought for the occasion, and then I be really psyched by the satisfaction that someone had seen my story and liked it so much that they just had to give it an award. So I was going to be a champion and my stunning artwork and stupendous writing were going to be seen, recognized, and validated. I was going to be, as the kids describe, special. Before they announced the winner, a teacher floated up to the podium to read Judith Viorst, Alexander's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. So here was this kid. He complained so much. Everything bad happened to him, but he was so funny. Oh, the woes of Alexander and his Valhalla of Australia. There he was, this little boy with the worst of luck, situated at the brunt of everything. Yet still, he was the protagonist of his very own book. He wasn't perfect, he didn't get the best grades, he didn't even get to eat his favorite foods, but in this story, he mattered, he was seen. I didn't win the competition, if you were wondering, but Marsha Berryhill did. Marsha's perfect drawings of blonde children and perfectly unlopsided balloons mesmerized the judges, and her artwork had no smears on it. It was at that moment, in all of my elementary steely determination, that I decided that I would write the perfect story that would make the teachers leap and weep. But I never wrote that favorite book in school. It was always Marcia, or it was Brent, or Amy, or Steve. Teachers described their writings with Zagat-like wonder in quoted snippets. Dazzling, so darn clever, stories that everyone could relate to. And they would read them out loud so the rest of the class could witness these literary manifestations of greatness. They never read mine. In 2020, we are witnessing a dynamic transformation in whose stories count and what kinds of narratives receive attention. I take part in the sea change with Tracy Sorrell, Cynthia Lydic Smith, Katrina Moore, and Kwame Alexander. These multi hued stories say that these lives matter, and establishing the utter importance of this mandate at the earliest age through literature for children is, in my opinion, the most effective and transformative element of social change. Picture books are the popular culture for young children and the current dialogue surrounding the importance of representation in Hollywood is only a fraction of the movement. It's no coincidence that these awards are called the Librarian Oscars. We create platforms for imagination and we distill everyday life into persuasive vignettes for developing minds. We build worlds for them, and we build worlds where they and others feel the cornerstones of inclusion. I thank the ALSC and the Cyber Committee for their hard work and for seeing, recognizing, and validating these people in history of fry bread and giving it this platform that allows others to see it. 
I'm grateful to Connie Shu at Roinbook for taking a chance on my story about the food of an indigenous family and to Megan Abate for encouraging me to inquire more. My agent, Jillian McKenzie, who started working with me after this book, pushes me to believe in my own ideas and talent. Elise McMullen, our outside reader, asked tough dissertation level questions about the back matter. This book would, about food and family would not be possible without that of my own. My partner Iris and children Hampton and Peregrine served as substantive and artistic inspiration. Old ladies in my Oklahoma family, my Aunt Fanny, Aunt Maggie, and my own mother taught me how to cook food and how to share it. And lastly, I have a message for the second grade boy at Fulton Elementary in 1979. I see you, we see you, and your story and your life matter. Hello, I am Lauren Emanette Liang, the chair of the 2020 Mildred L. Batchelder Award Committee. The Batchelder Award is awarded to a United States publisher for a children's book considered to be the most outstanding of those books originating in a country other than the United States and in a language other than English and subsequently translated into English for publication in the United States. All of our honor books this year feature young people grappling with understanding difficult situations. The beautifully translated writing and unique storytelling of each title make this an especially wonderful set of Batchelder honor books. Together with the amazing and hardworking 2020 Batchelder Committee, I want to congratulate the publishers and creators of these books. Congratulations! Godwin Books Henry Holt Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Macmillan Children's Publishing Group for The Beast Player, written by Nohoko Uehashi, translated from the Japanese by Kathy Hirano. Here's Kathy. I'm Kathy Hirano, translator of The Beast Player by Nohoko Uehashi. I'm delighted that it was selected for a Batchelder honor. For those of you who love Nohoko Uehashi's worlds, just like me, I have good news. The sequel, The Beast Warrior, will be out on July 28th, published by Henry Holt. Thank you. Athenium Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster Children's Publishing for The Distance Between Me and the Cherry Tree, written by Paola Peretti and translated from the Italian by Denise Muir. Here's Alex Borbola, editor of the book. Hello everyone, I'm Alex Borbola, the very lucky editor of Paola Peretti's The Distance Between Me and the Cherry Tree. And on behalf of Paola, I'd just like to extend our thanks to the Batchelder Committee for this amazing honor. It has truly been the cherry on top of Paola's U.S. publication. Enchanted Lion Books for Do Fish Sleep? Written by Jens Raschke, illustrated by Jens Rasmus. Translated from the German by Belinda Cooper. Here from Enchanted Lion Books is Claudia Bedrick. Abundant thanks to Dr. Lauren Leung, chair of this year's Batchelder Committee, and to the committee members for recognizing Do Fish Sleep, translated from German by Belinda Cooper. This is a challenging book about the death of a sibling told in the voice of a 10-year-old girl with absurdity, humor, hurt, anger, and profound sadness. For a U.S. readership, it definitely stands out as unfamiliar, even foreign territory into which to go. So we especially appreciate the courage and rigor shown by chair and committee in making this choice. Thank you so much. Plow Publishing House for When Spring Comes to the DMZ, written and illustrated by Uk Bae Lee, translated from the Korean by Chung Yan Wan and Eileen Wan. Here's Chung Yan. Hello, I'm Chung Yan Wan, who translated When Spring Comes to DMG. On behalf of Plow Publishing, I'm delighted to accept the Bachelor Honor Award for the book. We thank ALSC for hosting this event and highlighting some of the best children's literature. I'm looking forward to a time when 
this invisible barrier of virus is lifted and we all can meet again. When spring comes the whole world, thank you. The 2020 Mildred L. Batchelder Award goes to Enchanted Lion Books for Brown, written by Hokon Ovras, illustrated by Ivan Torshata, translated from the Norwegian by Carrie Dixon. Here from Enchanted Lion Books is Claudia Bedrick. Hello to all of you from South Brooklyn. My name is Claudia Bedrick, and I'm the publisher of Enchanted Lion Books. One of the things that publishing books in translation asserts and then reveals is that as human beings on a spiritual journey of finding and making meaning, we all share a bigger, broader, deeper, richer common language than we might initially assume or expect. And that human liberation with its journey into selfhood and towards finding a home in the world is, of course, dreamed, seen, and valued across all boundaries and borders. As one society sharing the planet with many others, it's important for us to understand the extent to which we need for our own health and well-being and that of our world in general to find culturally diverse, perhaps even unfamiliar, yet kindred and collectively valuable stories and visions. The Norwegian book Bruna, Brown in English, honored with this year's Batchelder Award, is a book of short, dry, wry sentences that yet run very deep. It's a story about agency, family, friendship, loss, and standing up for what is right. It's a terrific, beautifully translated book, and I hope you all read it and share it. But today, in face of what has come upon us planetarily over the last several months with COVID-19, and given the many forms of violence endemic to the U.S. and the resistance that has finally risen up, I would like to share some words from black woman, lesbian poet, and human being Audre Lorde, whose words are somehow always relevant. She says, I believe in societies that do not use members of that society for their profit and other parts of that society. I believe passionately in societies that define the good in terms of human needs as opposed to terms of profit. I believe that it is possible to have societies that do not categorize, reject, trivialize, objectify other human beings because of their differences that we can be different and use those differences not to destroy each other, but to move. These are the things I believe, and everything I breathe, say, do is a part of that. The way I eat, the way I raise my children, the way I teach, the way I write. And it gives me joy in the doing. I love individuals. I love human beings. The work of culture that we do through books is only as good as the books themselves and the space and support we give to those books to live and find voice in the world. Books in translation, as well as books from many communities, such as by and about people of color, have not historically been given as much commercial or even library shelf space as they should have for us as people and readers to do the deepest possible transformative work of culture. And it is precisely these books for which we should be making and holding space, especially at a time when our own society defines far too much in terms of corporate profit and far too little in terms of human needs and the ancient question of what makes for a good human life. Often it takes books from other cultures and countries for us to be reminded that there is such a thing as a social contract, that community might count more than our American individualism, and that shared human happiness could maybe, just maybe, be the greatest treasure of all. I would like to thank Dr. Lauren Leong, who chaired the Batchelder Committee for this award year, and the committee members for honoring Enchanted Lion, translator Carrie Dixon, author Hakun Uvrias, and illustrator Oyvind Torsader by choosing Brown. I would also like to thank ALSK in its entirety for its continued support of the global richness of children's literature. And finally, I would like to thank USBBY and the many librarians across, across the country who work tirelessly in support of diversity broadly defined and books in translation for young readers. Thank you.
I wish you all a good day. Hello, I'm Katie Pasiga. I served as the 2020 Chair of the Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award. The Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award is given to the producer of the most distinguished digital media for an early learning audience produced in the United States during the preceding year. Throughout 2019, the award selection committee identified, evaluated, and discussed a wide variety of digital media designed for children from ages two to eight and their caregivers. In the end, we selected one winner and two honor titles. Before I name those, however, I would like to acknowledge my thoughtful and hardworking committee members whose deliberations stretched my thinking about digital media for young children. This was a truly wonderful committee to lead and it was a joy to work with each of them. Together we celebrate this year's two honorees, which I will announce in alphabetical order, and the 2020 winner of the Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award. Yay! We're all doing the same thing! iNaturalist for Seek by iNaturalist. Here's Abhas Mishraj, product lead and designer. Hi, I'm Abhas Mishraj, the product lead and designer for Seek by iNaturalist. On behalf of the entire iNaturalist team, I wanted to thank the ALSC for honoring Seek for excellence in early learning digital media. Our goal with Seek was to connect curious naturalists of all ages to the species and the world all around them. And we're thankful for how well it's been received and thrilled to be able to receive this award. Thank you. Tiny Bob Inc. for States of Matter. 2020 Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award goes to WGBH for Molly of Denali. Here to accept the award are Bill Shribman and Melissa Carlson of WGBH. Hi, I'm Melissa Carlson, a senior digital producer on Molly of Denali. And I'm Bill Shrubman, a senior exec producer on the very same project. And we're here today to thank you for the ALSC's Excellence in Early Learning Digital Media Award for our work on Molly of Denali. Yep, Molly is a PBS kids show that we produced at WGBH in Boston, where we both work. It was funded by the U.S. Department of Education under a Ready to Learn grant and supported by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. It's the first national children's series to feature a Native American lead character. Molly Mabray is a feisty and resourceful 10-year-old Alaska Native girl. Molly takes viewers ages 4 to 8 on all of her adventures, fostering literacy skills along the way. And it's not just a TV series, and, and that's where we come in. We produced a website, a suite of digital games, an app, and it's this app that you've kind of acknowledged in your award. And in the app, children can go on dog sled races, they can create feeding projects, go fishing, and help Molly run the Denali Trading Post. The Molly Denali app teaches children to use familiar texts such as those in books, diagrams, and captioned photographs as part of an informational text curriculum. And this helps them solve problems, accomplish tasks, and help Molly's friends as they go on their adventures. Our informational text curriculum is supported by Dr. Nell Duke, and Alaska Native content producers and advisors have been part of every stage of development with us. And even though we're in lockdown, as you can probably tell, we're still continuing to produce new content, including new games about animals, gardening, and even a forthcoming snowboarding game. So we'd like to thank you once again for this award. And thank you very much. And wish you all very well. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Hello, I am Jean Gaffney, Chair of the 2020 Theodore Seuss Geisel Book Award Committee. The Geisel Award is presented to the most distinguished American beginning reader published in the previous year. Through artistic and literary excellence, the winning book demonstrates imagination and creativity in books for young readers. This year, Geisel winner is Stop Bot, written and illustrated by James Yang. The Geisel Committee also selected three wonderful honor books. This year, there were six people on the Geisel Committee, and they had lots of experience and expertise to bring to the process. Thank you to the committee for your commitment 
to excellence in beginning readers. And now it's time for the presentation of the awards for honor books and the winner. The Book Hog, written and illustrated by Greg Pizzoli, published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers. Here's Greg. Hi, my name is Greg Pizzoli and I am a book hog. I love books. I have my entire life. And today, I want to say thank you to everyone at ALSK and the Geisel Committee for awarding my book, The Book Hog, with a 2020 Geisel honor. I'm sorry we can't all be together this summer, but I wanted to let all the other book hogs out there know how special and important this is to me, and I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Chick and Brain, Smell My Foot, written and illustrated by C.C. Bell published by Candlewick Press. Here's Cece. Oh, hello. I am Cece Bell, and I wanted to take a moment to say thank you for giving this book, Smell My Foot, a guise of honor. I really, really appreciate it. And I know that Brain appreciates it too. And maybe if he stops smelling his foot, he will someday say thank you as well. I hope that we get to get together soon because I miss you guys. But once again, thank you very, very much. Bye. Flubby is not a good pet. Written and illustrated by J.E. Morris published by Penguin Workshop, an imprint of Penguin Young Readers, a division of Penguin Random House. Here's J.E. Hi, I'm Jennifer E. Morris. I'm the author and illustrator of Flubby is Not a Good Pet. And this is Flubby. Flubby and I just wanted to thank everyone at the ALSC and especially the Geisel Committee members for this wonderful honor. Ouch. <laughs> Um, and thank you to all the wonderful people at Penguin Workshop. Thanks, everybody. The winner of the Theodore Seuss Geisel Medal is Stop Bot, written and illustrated by James Yang, published by Viking Books for Young Readers in imprint of Penguin Young Readers, a division of Penguin Random House. Here to deliver his acceptance speech is 2020 Geisel medalist James Yang. Hi, I'm James Yang, and uh, first off, Thank you so much. I can't believe one of my books has a sticker on it. These were the books with the stickers were the ones that I remember the librarians always told us about. So my mind's super blown, but I'm, I'm still blown away. When I got the call from the Geisel Committee uh, on a Sunday evening, I was stunned. And after I hung up, I I knew it was kind of a big deal, but just to play it safe, I Googled, just to make sure. So then I Googled, and it was actually a bigger deal than I thought it was. So then I got up from the computer and went into the kitchen where my wife was cooking. She goes, what's up? And I, I said, honey, I, I think a lifelong dream of mine just happened. And that, after saying that, I, I burst into tears like, <laughs> and then she gave me a big hug, so... Thank you so much for such a wonderful moment. As a kid, our elementary school had this great student library, and on one shelf, there was all the Caldecott winners. On another shelf were all the Newberry winners, and we knew that those were the books that the librarians and teachers told us were the special ones that we had to read. And almost all the kids took it very seriously, so we loved reading those books. And then there was one shelf, which was our favorite. It had all the Dr. Seuss books, the entire row. And uh, we would just sit there on the floor and pull out the books and read them one after another and hand them to each other. And it's still one of my favorite moments as a kid. And I am really still blown away uh, because, because of this moment. You guys have really given me a lot of confidence. I'm even more excited to do stories. And even while celebrating with my editor and art director, another story popped up. So thank you so much for that. Um, I know it's a crazy time, 
And I do appreciate that maybe books are even more special and that librarians are even more important to share the books with the kids in whatever way, way we can it's just to open up a whole new world. So thank you for that. And finally, I just need to thank the ALSC and the ALA for m making this crazy dream come true and Viking for Children, who had, who had the faith to publish all my books. And of course, last but not least, I need to thank my editor, Tracy Gates and Jim Hoover, who've just been a wonderful, they're like my dream team to collaborate with. So once again, thank you. And this has meant the world to me. This concludes our award ceremony. Once again, our sincere thanks for joining us in celebrating children's media. I hoped you enjoyed hearing from our medalists as much as I did. I encourage you to stay connected with the Association for Library Service to Children by visiting our website, where you can learn more about our awards and work. If you're watching live, be sure to stay tuned to the American Library Association's YouTube channel to see more award ceremonies to recognize some of the winners of the 2020 Youth Media Awards. Thank you.